We all know how to spot an email scam. We know we shouldn't send thousands of pounds to a Nigerian prince or mystery attorney, no matter how tempting the riches on offer. But when it comes to property, it's not that easy because you're often dealing with seemingly reputable lawyers and developers who make everything feel safe. And there are only subtle differences between a deal to grab with both hands and one to run a mile from. So how can you actually spot a property scam? and avoid wasting thousands of pounds on a nightmare deal. Well, to talk you through the common red flags, I'm gonna tell you the real life story of a lady called Sarah, who got in touch with us about a deal that she referred to as the biggest mistake of her life. And sadly, it's far from a one-off. See if you can spot the danger signs as I go along. Sarah had been interested in getting into property for a while and ended up on quite a few mailing lists after making inquiries with different companies. One day she got excited when one of the emails that came through was offering an opportunity in a city that she'd already had her eye on as being a property hotspot. The salesperson she spoke to was polite but persistent and kept pointing out the lack of risk in the deal because the developer was offering a guaranteed return of 9% for the first three years. Plus, Sarah didn't need to come up with all the money straight away because the deal was off plan. She only needed to put down a 25% deposit to start with, followed by another 25% in a year's time, with the rest being paid on completion. So Sarah moved ahead and to make her life even easier, she was happy to accept the salesperson's recommendation to use the developer's solicitor rather than seeking one out herself. At first, all was well. Sarah would get updates on the progress of the build with photos of the site, and she got more and more excited about finally becoming a property investor. But as time went on, the updates started to get more sporadic, and it became more and more difficult to get updates from the solicitor. And eventually, Sarah got the gut-wrenching news that the developer had gone into administration. The property that she so looked forward to owning would never be built. And worst of all, basically all her deposit was gone. It's important to say here that Sarah is not a silly person. Everything that was suggested to her seems to be perfectly reasonable, especially if you're not aware of how property deals are typically structured and what you need to do to protect yourself. But in retrospect, this story did have all the classic signs of a dodgy deal. So what were the red flags? Well, first of all, there was the hard sell. If a deal's that good, there is no need to put you under pressure. Often you'll see the same opportunities punted around by multiple property companies who go out of their way to force them onto investors because they receive high commissions for doing so. Second was the guaranteed rent. At first, it's hard to see how there's anything wrong with this. Isn't it just showing the developers confidence in the property's prospects to the extent that they'll foot the bill themselves if needed? And there isn't anything wrong with it per se, but it shouldn't be needed. If it's in the right location, it should rent easily. And if it's being sold at the right price, it should sell without the need for incentives like this. But the real big warning sign was the next one. The fact that Sarah needed to put down a 50% deposit. It's worth saying that lots of developments are built and sold requiring deposits of this size. Most of them are completed as planned and a perfectly good investment. But paying a deposit of this size puts you at significant risk because as we'll see later, it can't be protected. If anything does go wrong, your deposit is at risk. So why do developers ask for large deposits? Well, the best case is that it's being used to fund construction. Developers typically need to take out a loan to cover the cost of building, which they then repay from the proceeds of the sales that they make. But of course, they need to pay interest on this borrowing. So it's much cheaper if they can get you to pay for it instead. But in the worst case scenario, your deposit might be used to fund something else entirely. The next warning sign was Sarah's decision to use a solicitor that was recommended by the developer. Now, it is only an extreme extreme minority of solicitors who would consider doing anything dodgy. But it is possible that funds will end up being released to a developer when they shouldn't be. And if that happens, you can find it ends up funding cars and holidays rather than bricks and laborers. Okay, so now we know the warning signs. So what can we do to make sure we protect ourselves and avoid becoming a victim? Well, the first is the classic. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you're being plied with incentives, it's probably a warning sign. If you're being offered a rental guarantee, question why it's necessary. But also, if you do go ahead, assume that the guarantee is worthless. Estimate the rent that you believe the property would achieve based on comparable rents in the area and make sure that the area has strong rental demand. If it does, then you've got the foundations of a strong long-term investment, which you need anyway, because if the returns from an investment are only propped up by the developer's guarantee, its value will plummet once that has expired. Next, always use your own independent solicitor. Now, there are efficiencies to having one solicitor dealing with multiple units on the development. It means that they can put more time and attention into it because they're effectively getting paid multiple times for the same due diligence. So when clients buy through us, we suggest, but don't insist, that they use the same solicitor as everyone else. 
but critically, this solicitor is completely independent from the developer. Even if there are no shenanigans and they're not trying to siphon money off, your solicitor should be someone you can trust completely and turn to whenever you've got questions. If there's anything in the lease that you're unsure about, you should be able to talk to them and know that you're receiving an unbiased opinion because their responsibility is to protect you and nobody else. Third, the most important rule of all, never ever pay a deposit of more than 10% of the value of the property. That's because a deposit of up to 10% can be held in escrow, so it's not released to the developer at all. Or if it is released to the developer to help fund the construction, it can be protected by warranty. So if for any reason the developer is unable to hand you the property they promised at the end, the warranty will kick in and your funds will be paid back to you under insurance. There are no warranty providers that will guarantee a deposit of more than 10%. So this should always be your limit if you want to avoid having funds at risk. Now, this doesn't mean you have no risk at all. You will incur some legal fees, possibly a wasted mortgage application, and of course the opportunity cost of having your cash tied up on a development that doesn't materialize. It isn't ideal, but it's also not something that's going to wreck your financial life in the same way as losing tens of thousands of pounds could do. And finally, do your due diligence on the developer. Things do go wrong that are completely unpredictable, whether that's to do with the economy or the developer themselves. But a good track record should give you confidence. If they've completed multiple schemes successfully in the past, that's a good sign. And you could even go and look at some of them to check the quality of the build. At the very least, Google the name of the company, the names of the directors, and the names of any associated companies that you find or company's house. You'd be amazed how many times developers get into trouble, a deal falls apart, and then they pop up again with a new company name and do it all again. So by taking these simple measures, you can protect yourself from an out and out property scam. But there are still plenty of other ways you can unwittingly make a bad investment. One where you either lose money or almost as painfully, sign up for a whole load of hassle and stress without making anywhere near the returns to make it worthwhile. So watch this video next, where I'll talk you through the seven signs that you could be buying a nightmare property and how to make sure you avoid them.